thank you for joining me today. We are going to talk about the food processor's reports. Now the reports in the food processor are there so you can see the nutrient breakdown of your client's dietary intake or of a recipe. Let's start with the dietary intake you see on screen. Now your person's dietary intake may be broken down by day and meal, like the one shown here. Keep that in mind because it's going to show up later. And the first report I want to look at is the recommendations report. This report shows the recommended nutrient intake for your client calculated from their age, sex, height, weight, and activity level data, and based on DRI nutrition standards. The nutrient and nutrient components shown are those selected in your nutrients to view file, which you can access from the home ribbon. The next report is the spreadsheet. If your client's dietary intake is set up in meals and days, that's going to show up here as well. And again, the nutrients shown are those you set up in your nutrients to view file. You can view each day's total, and here at the bottom is an average of all days. We don't really want to use a total for all days because it's not really helpful in assessing a diet. And the average number here is going to be used in other reports, like the multi-column report. So the multi-column report provides a good overall summary of your client's nutritional intake in a column format. You can choose to view the actual nutrient intake, the recommended nutrient intake, and or what percent of the recommended nutrient intake has been met. You can also choose to set the number of columns. The single nutrient report shows what percentage of the selected nutrient each day contributes to the total intake. You will have a total for each day, which is broken down into meals and food items. Here we can see that day one contributes the most calories, followed by day three and day two. The bar graph report shows total intake, the recommended intake, and the percent recommendation met. Bars visually indicate how the nutrient intake compares to the nutritional standard. And checking diet adequacy color codes the bars into green, which means good, yellow, which means pretty good, and red, which means not good. The calories and fats report is useful for quickly seeing the calorie and fat breakdowns for your diet. The source of calories windows shows graphically the percentage of calories from protein, carbohydrates, fat, and alcohol, and then the source of fat window shows the breakdown of fats. This report can be displayed as a pie chart or a bar graph. Here's the MyPlate report. This is a really popular one because it graphically compares a diet's actual food intake with the optimum daily intake per the MyPlate recommendations. And users can easily and quickly see where a diet may be falling short. The report also offers suggestions for improvement. Now we're gonna look at the recipe reports. So let me close out of all of these first. The first report I want to show you is the Nutrition Facts label. This is a good teaching tool because it is so well known. And what we have here is the standard Nutrition Facts panel. You are limited in how you can edit the label. It's mostly just the option of showing or hiding certain elements on it. These reports are really similar to what you saw for the person, the spreadsheet, the multi-column, the single nutrient, but let's look at the bar graph. Because the bar graph is designed for comparisons, you'll have to first select a profile to compare it to. So I am selecting US Label Adult 2016. And there we have the bar graph report. And then there's calorie and fats and my plates. These next reports are slightly different. They have been formatted primarily for printing. And the first one we're going to look at is dairy density. This report shows the density of ice cream or other dairy products based on an industry formula. When you choose dairy density from the reports menu, it tells the program to calculate and display the density of the current recipe using the amount of total fat and water. This report is only useful for dairy products. Keep that in mind. Label display one. This shows the nutrition facts label on a printable sheet with room for notes. This is the recipe card with multi-column. I like to use this one a lot because it has my recipe here and then my nutrient breakdown here, plus any preparation notes that I might've added will show up here and instructions here. And then the recipe card with multi-column per 100 grams. I'm not gonna show it to you because this recipe happens to be 100 grams per serving, so it would be just the same thing. Now this is a recipe card one and it shows instead of a breakdown, instead of the multi-column, 
um, the nutrition facts for this recipe. Plus, again, I've got my preparation notes and any cooking instructions down here. And then here's the protein quality report. The protein quality report shows the amino acid score for your recipe. A score of 100 or above indicates a complete or high quality protein, and a score below 100 indicates a lower quality protein. It shows the actual versus ideal ratios of amino acids scored as percents. All reports can be printed by clicking the print icon. The data in most reports can be exported as tab delimited text files. And there are a few reports preferences that I want to go over really quickly. From your preference files, select reports. Here you can change the font of your reports to anything you have in your system. You can word wrap for printed reports and check this to show the small icons. Here you set your margins and this is where you choose what elements to display and where to position them. You can also add header text or an image. This is ideal if you want to add your own business branding to your reports and footer text. And then here you can choose which optional sections of the recipe to print or not print with your recipe or ingredient reports. These are the reports plus preferences. Remember the reports that I showed you that were formatted mostly for printing? You can set a few preferences here. You can add a header image and decide where to place it or add some header and footer text. Now you can also change some colors for your reports. So click colors and let's look at the calories and fats report. I'm going to change this protein to orange and then I'm going to click OK and go back and open that report just so you can see what it looks like when I do that. So you can change the other colors as well. And that should do it for this tutorial. Thank you.